Hi, welcome to Parent Town TV. Today we have with us Diana Sir, and our episode today is on how do we raise a bilingual child. Welcome, Diana. Thank you, Millie. Hello, everyone. Yes, and uh, would you like to share a little bit about yourself with our viewers? Okay, uh, so I've been in Singapore, the media scene, for more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. I started out in television. Uh, after about 10 years, I went over to the newspapers where I became a newspaper reporter. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think my one true love is still working with visuals and working with video. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Channel News Asia in the year 2003 mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a broadcast journalist. Um, and I think I haven't stopped telling stories since. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us here today. Um, I understand that you've opened, uh, you've started a portal. It's mm -hmm. called Crazy About Chinese. Would you like to share with us a little bit about what Crazy About Chinese is? Yeah, absolutely. So Crazy About Chinese is the name of my program. It's an online program that you can find at www.dinosaur.com. That's my name. Uh, and uh, the idea is to be a cheerleader to parents via social media mm -hmm. and via the internet world because it's so easily accessible these days. Uh, to be a cheerleader that parents can be motivated mm -hmm. and inspired, uh, to inspire their children to acquire their mother tongue and to learn their mother tongue from a very young age. So the website basically, uh, I share via my website videos mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. daily activities that you can uh, weave in a little bit of your mother tongue, mm -hmm. uh, as well as ideas uh, that parents can use on a day-to-day -day basis. Easy, inexpensive ideas that you can use to play with your children. Uh, the website for now focuses on children from age zero to six years old, mm -hmm. uh, because that's the golden period for language learning. Mm. Mm. Well, I read somewhere that um, that uh, the, your ability to speak Mandarin was one of the key factors that attra attracted um, your husband, James, you know, <laughs> to pay attention to you. Like, who is this, you know, anchor mm -hmm. woman who can speak Mandarin? Uh -huh. So, does uh, the entire family um, know how to? Uh, are, are they entirely? Is your entire family effectively bilingual? Um, well, you know, effectively bilingual is something that I struggle with because mm -hmm. for years when people say uh, that, oh, you know, you're one of the few effectively bilingual uh, hosts mm -hmm. around, I used to say, oh, no, not really because my Chinese really isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And now because I'm so into this, uh, I have done some research, I've done some reading up, and I realized that um, you don't have to be equally good at both languages mm -hmm. to call yourself effectively bilingual. So there are not many of us who can do like a 50-50 thing. Yeah. Um, one tends to have a dominant language, mm -hmm. even if you are effectively bilingual. So I've come to accept that uh, maybe I am effectively bilingual right. uh, because I am able to converse quite naturally in both languages. Right. But, you know, I'm dominant in English. Right. So my Chinese language is something that I work on very, very hard. Mm -hmm. To your question, is my entire family effectively bilingual? Uh, minus my husband now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> my husband isn't uh, effectively bilingual, but my kids, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the amazing thing is, I have three kids. There are 10, 8, and 5. Mm -hmm. With all of them, uh, I focused a great deal on Chinese language learning since birth. Mm -hmm. uh, but my number three, Jamie, mm -hmm. gets mm -hmm. the most effort. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of the methods that I've used on her is what I've shared uh, on Crazy About Chinese. Mm. I find that I found that at the same age, Jamie is five now, she's far more effectively bilingual compared to the other two. Okay. Uh, she's able to switch quite naturally. What what else, what were some of the different methods that you had, you know, bring up Jamie and your first two um, children? I think with Jamie, uh, I'm able to <laughs> Oh, she's my last one, so I wasn't pregnant again. <laughs> With the first two, I found myself pregnant, like, oh, you are not even two years old, I'm pregnant again. So I have a lot more time to play with her. I, see. I think the focus for me, um, and I think for the uh, uh, early childhood learning mm -hmm. really in Singapore, uh, is really to focus on playing, to learn via playing, because young children want to play. Not so young children also want to play, but um, 
through play, we want to um, use the language mm -hmm. so that the language becomes a very natural part of their environment mm -hmm. and they have very positive associations with the language, whether your mother tongue is um, English, whether your mother tongue is um, Chinese, your mother mm -hmm. tongue is Malay. Mm. What, why is bilingualism so important for our children? Um, well, for, for me, my mother tongue is Chinese, mm -hmm. okay? But let me stress that even though my, uh, my, my some of the methods that I teach uh, uh, the focus is Chinese language, mm -hmm. but the principles remain the same. Mm -hmm. So if you are teaching your child Malay, if mm -hmm. you are teaching your child Hindi or Japanese, mm -hmm. it would be the same principles. I see. Uh, so, um, oh, I'm sorry, the question was... Um, Why is bilingualism so important for our children? Our children live in a much more globalized world mm -hmm. than we do. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a long time ago, but our kids in school uh, are having to compete with the China kids who come into our system mm. and who kick our butts like True. big time. Yes. And these kids <clears throat> are very driven. They speak both languages mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. um, and here we are being monolingual mm. uh, when we can be bilingual. Mm. So I feel that why be monolingual when you can be bilingual? Right. Our kids live in a very, very globalized world mm. in which I think having more than one language, it's going to be advantages to them in their professional lives as mm. well as in their personal lives. And by bilingualism, I, I mean, you know, if your mother tongue is any language, not just Mandarin. True, I, I, I tend to agree with it. Um, I'm married to, uh, my husband is Indian, so we come from an interracial family. Mm -hmm. And even then, my, my kids mm -hmm. also learn Mandarin, because I also do agree with you that bilingualism is really important for them. But more than that, I also feel that um, um, it expands their horizons when oh, they can absolutely. speak two different languages. Yeah, because when you acquire a language, you're acquiring the culture as well. Right. So when you're about bicultural, I think you have you bring a different perspective right. uh, to a lot of the things that you come across. Right. Uh, uh, and that, that ultimately, if nothing else, it just makes you a more interesting, colourful person. True, that's and true. And I think the benefits of bilingualism, for example, in... Uh, in, in cognitive development mm -hmm. in children uh, and even on the impact of Alzheimer disease mm -hmm. much later on in life mm -hmm. uh, has been well documented. Yes. Uh, so there That's are true. very many benefits. Yes. Uh, so for me, I think the benefits far outweigh mm -hmm. the disadvantages. That's right. That's right. Well, even our, our leaders like you know, Lee Kuan Yew and uh, as well as S.R. Nathan mm -hmm. uh, has also learned Mandarin very, very much later in their uh, senior years. Um, so they've learned Mandarin um, and being effectively bilingual. I'll, I'll tell something remarkable that I never thought would happen because too many parents in Singapore say that, oh, but I can't teach because I'm not good at Mandarin myself. Mm. Uh, and, you know, they conveniently, and I say conveniently because uh, when a child is zero to six years old, that is the golden period to lay the foundation for mm. language learning. Mm -hmm. However, during this period, there is no test, there is no exam. Mm. So Singaporeans, <laughs> being uh, very exam smart as we are, mm. we tend to kind of like sweep it under the carpet because mm. no test what, no exam what. So why stress over it? Right. Uh, uh, and, and I think it's, it's, it's a shame because mm. this is the period where um, they are going to be able to benefit the most. True. If you put in the most, if you invest in them the time uh, and the resources the most. Right. But for a lot of parents, one of their concern is that, you know, they might confuse their children. So mm. what are the pros and cons of studying bilingual, you um, know, um, teaching them bilingualism? Don't, under, don't underestimate your child. Mm. Uh, the child doesn't get so easily confused mm. as you think that, that uh, they, they will. Mm. We are the ones who get confused because our adults' minds are not so good anymore right. in learning. Um, they don't get confused. For me, personally, um, I think the best way is to do a mommy, mommy mm. language and a daddy language thing. Mm. Um, ideally, uh, one parent takes one language. Okay, so uh, if the mommy speaks Mandarin yes. and the daddy speaks English to the child. Yes, that, that is easily separable, if mm -hmm. you like, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I know in some households they say, oh, Tuesdays is Chinese day or Fridays is Malay day, and then that, that sort of thing. Right. You can do it any way you want. I see. Uh, but but I, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of reminding the kid that, oh, it's Wednesday today, no need to speak Chinese, uh, because <laughs> the rest of the world doesn't speak Chinese, uh, uh, Mandarin for the rest of the... Right. Uh, of the week that doesn't right, right, quite right. work out that way right. so um, I, I, I think if possible it should be one language mm. each uh, the child doesn't get confused mm -hmm. 
uh, I think research has shown that as much. I can't quote you specific studies right now, mm. but the child does not get confused because mm. they are able to process different sounds from a very early age. I see. Yeah. So how early, um, how early can you start teaching a child two different languages? Um, as soon as the child is able to hear, and I and, and we believe that the baby can hear when it's in utero. Oh, so uh, even in, when the baby is in your womb, you can start speaking in both languages. Um, yeah, absolutely, because you talk to your child. In, during see. pregnancy, you're talking to your child. Right. So your child would absorb whatever that you are communicating with, right, it, right. especially as a mom. Right. So um, from birth, my children, I let them listen to the sounds. Right. So it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't become a foreign language. I see. It's part of the environment. I, see. Um, I, was, I, I was not properly taught, if you know what I mean, in mm. my Mandarin. It's basically Heartland, HDB, whatever you hear at the market, whatever right. you hear downstairs at the Kopi Tiao, right. and whatever you hear on television. Right. It's a mishmash of Rojak Mandarin or Market Mandarin, as right. they call it. Yes. But these are familiar sounds that I have grown up with, mm. and it's all in them. Mm. So I really urge parents with young children to expose your child since birth. It could be music. Mm -hmm. Nothing beats the sound of mommy and daddy's voices. Absolutely nothing beats that. But if that's not possible, then something else will have to, to take its place. So it could be music, um, it could be DVDs, it could be anything. It could be grandparents, it could be an aunt or uncle. But let them listen to the sound. I, I agree because I remember when I was young, um, my parents speak Cantonese. So I think it, uh, a lot of moms and dads, our generations, we are effectively trilingual mm -hmm. because a lot of us would be able to speak English, Mandarin, and possibly a dialect. So I do, I, I do agree with you. Now, um, I know I, I've heard from some mommy friends or daddy friends and they would say, oh, but it takes so much effort, you know, to teach a child how to speak, you know, um, two languages. So how far will you go in, in terms of, you know, teaching your child bilingualism? Uh, I think when children are, are at a very young age, mm -hmm. um, they are not able to make good decisions themselves. So mm -hmm. parents have to take the lead. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sounds really tough because I had an interviewer who, who, who said this to me. Huh? You mean I have to work some more? I'm already so tired. Mm -hmm. uh, there's parenting and then there's work, there's housework, and I have to teach a second language. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think... Uh, if parents don't take the lead, it's going to be quite hard mm. uh, for the children to mm. be inspired. Mm. I mean, we all wish that we can throw money at the problem. Mm. <laughs> I mean, if you can have uh, your child go to a Chinese lesson or have a Chinese tutor come to your house every single day mm -hmm. of the week, then power to you because right. I, I wish I could do that. Yes. But in the, in the absence of that, I'm going to have to to fill in that space. I'm mm. going to have to spend that five, 10 minutes a day. Mm. And what I'm saying on my website is that you don't really have to spend a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, play with a child. It's a lot simpler than we think. Mm. Because children will be happy, babies will be happy if I give them a microphone with a sponge on it. They'll be fiddling with it for minutes, you know? Right. Uh, because that's a new toy. It's all about curiosity. It's all about exploration. Right. So later on, later part of the episode, you'll be showing us how to, you know, introduce Mandarin to your child. I'll, I'll be playing. <laughs> okay, that's be great. Playing. But, but I think uh, back to the question mm. that you were um, asking about. Uh, which is uh, how how far will you go? How far would I go? Yes, to introduce um, your children to bilingual. You know, um, I am lucky because my job is in the media, mm. so I have had I've been trying to look for opportunities for me to improve my own Mandarin, mm -hmm. so that I can lead by example. So of late, um, some of your viewers may have noticed that I've been appearing actually exclusively on Chinese television, mm -hmm. uh, because I know that the only way for me to improve is if I were to do it again and again and again. So it's been really painful because in my 40s, it's not easy for me to learn. Mm. Uh, but I am improving much to my own surprise. If I do it every day, uh, if I put my job on the line. So um, um, that's how I've been trying to improve. Mm -hmm. I try to read the newspapers. I listen to Chinese podcasts. Um, I watch the Chinese news. In fact, speaking of news, um, I volunteered to the Chinese news and said that, look, you know, can I audition? Because I would love to read the Chinese news. And that will make me improve even more, even mm. faster. Um, I auditioned and they didn't want me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say it's very brave of you I, I, <laughs> to I, put in I so much it. effort. I know, because I know that if they see that mummy is doing it, mm. uh, then hopefully they're going to be inspired as well. Right. Wow. I, I, I'm truly very inspired as well to by you, you know, to learn, to try and volunteer for mm. more mentoring shows and do more mentoring talks.
Thank you. All right. Um, but you know, um, we also have parents who say that, that both mummies and daddies speak English. So they are very concerned that their kids might be labeled as Jakantang, you know. So how, what kind of, what advice would you give these parents? Uh, so, well, you know, a lot of Singaporeans don't speak Mandarin. Mm. It doesn't mean that they are westernized or it doesn't mean that they are westerners for mm. that matter. Uh, let me bring you to a story that I have up on my website now. It's basically an interview. It's an article, an interview with Jill, uh, Jill Newbronner. Mm. Some of you may know her as a newsreader. Mm -hmm. uh, Jill is uh, Eurasian. She's mixed parentage. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Jill is married to a British man. And when her girls were born in Hong Kong, both Jill and her husband committed themselves to letting the girls learn Mandarin mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. So um, Jill is learning Mandarin herself from scratch, mm. just so that she can show the girls that mommy is walking the talk mm. and um, I'm going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's hard for mm. me, but if I can do it, so can you. Mm. This is a, a, a non-Chinese who is starting from scratch mm -hmm. at not in her childhood years. Mm. Um, and she told me, she says, no, I'm very surprised. Why don't Singaporean Chinese like to speak Mandarin? I, I don't have an answer for her. I don't have an answer for her. Yeah. What kind of activities can we do to help our kids improve their Mandarin? Okay, so maybe let me start from a, a very specific example. Mm -hmm. uh, a story that I just uploaded on my website mm -hmm. recently is basically called Get More Out of That Book. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I read a Chinese book with my five-year-old. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Huang Yu San, which means a yellow umbrella. Mm -hmm. After we finish reading the book, um, I do what I call the extended activities mm -hmm. based on the book. Oh, extended um, activities. Yeah, so uh, for me, is uh, my principle is why waste the book? Mm -hmm. So you've read the story, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. and I have activities that build on what we have read. Mm -hmm. So in this case, since it's about an umbrella, mm -hmm. uh, I got her to, to draw for me what she's read in the book, uh, mm -hmm. what you can remember, what appeals okay. to you, mm -hmm. and I think children like to use their hands, mm -hmm. so she had a good time sketching the umbrella, drawing it, mm -hmm. and from her drawings, I could tell which parts of the story she understood, mm -hmm. and what appealed to her. Right. So when she put in the umbrella, the, 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 the details she put on the umbrella, I realized that she understood the key points of the story. Mm. Something which she may not be willing to tell me if mm. I had spoken to her. Mm. So art is a different way for them to express mm. themselves. Mm. Um, other things that I've done, for example, we read a book about um, a rabbit. Mm. I gave them some plasticine mm. and I said, make rabbits out of the plasticine okay. or, or the Play-Doh. Uh, or I can pick up my phone uh, when we are free and I will Google or a YouTube a video that is very similar to the story that we've just read mm -hmm. and, and show them the video which shouldn't last more than three to four minutes. Mm -hmm. So these extended activities will add on to their learning mm -hmm. and I, I think it also aids retention. It mm -hmm. helps them to remember the story and the words used in the story more. That's true. And I think sometimes for uh, children that young, below six years old, they may not have the vocabulary or the uh, capacity to actually verbalize mm -hmm. uh, what they have processed. Yeah. So it, I, I think that's a great idea to have them draw it out or you know, do art and crafts with them. That's, that's a right. fantastic that's idea. Right. I would definitely try it. <laughs> <laughs> so Diana, I used to use flashcards when my babies were young. Do you, do you think they are effective? Uh, I use flashcards with my first and second one because I had more time. Mm -hmm. So I actually do believe in them. As to how they work, I don't know. But for me, when I learn my scripts, and I learn a lot of scripts, uh, it's also something visual as well as audio and memory. So it's a few things that work together. So I do believe in flashcards. I see. Yeah. Would you like to demonstrate how you use flashcards with your, with your kids? Okay, Th there's probably a lot of ways to use flashcards and I only know one way and that's the way that I was taught when my children were very young. So, so here we go, I'm going to... This is seven months old, baby shark. Shark, look at this! Yo, wo, hui, zai, yong, yao. That's it. And you can see that she was actually paying attention to your voice yes. and to, you know, looking at the smash cut. Because of, yes. the, because of the movement. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, sweetie. Okay, one more. She. Oh, <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so that's just another way, let me have one sweetie, so that's just another way that I think we can make use of uh, the cue mm -hmm. cards uh, 
moving forward because I like to be able to reuse things because they're so expensive. So for example, this card, uh, what I will do when baby is much bigger, when she's mm -hmm. ready to learn some writing, maybe at about four years old, I reckon, right. uh, I, I would hold her hand and trace, do tracing. Oh, tracing a is idea. a really important part of writing skills right. moving forward. Mm -hmm. So tracing is a really big thing. Right. Um, when they are bigger, <laughs> when they are a little bit bigger, uh, maybe about two or three, you can mm -hmm. actually do that just for fun mm -hmm. and not to, uh, not rote learning or forcing the right, child. Right. But of course, you know, um, if you have a pen, it will be good to write to, to, to write the number for the strokes right. because in Chinese writing, the strokes and the sequence of the strokes, uh, it's really important. Mm -hmm. And nowadays with technology, I go online because I've forgotten a lot of my Chinese and I don't remember the sequence anymore. So I go online to check the actual strokes for this, like mm. this one goes first or that one goes last, that sort of thing. Right. So for the eight-year-old, you number them and then you say, you go look at it and copy it. Wow, that's a really good idea. Yeah. I think that's that's a one in a million dollar idea, <laughs> uh, you know, to how to learn to write. Thank you, Diana, for joining us today. Thank you. Are there anything else you would like to share with our readers um, about how to learn Mandarin? Yeah, I think three final points. One is that parents need to take the lead. It doesn't matter if you think your Mandarin is not very good. I think for the child, seeing mom and dad trying, mm -hmm. uh, it's really important. Uh, secondly, a little goes a long way. You don't have to spend a lot of time drilling them in Chinese. You just have to play with them five, ten minutes mm -hmm. a day if you can and weave some Mandarin into it. Mm -hmm. um, thirdly, uh, be creative and have fun with what you want to do with your children. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, um, when my Jamie, my five-year-old, she loves to eat... Um, Watermelon. She mm -hmm. loves to eat watermelon. So before her snack, I give her a plastic knife and I give her a, a, a little board mm -hmm. and we do watermelon shapes. Si gua xing zhuang. Mm. So we use the knife and we cut the different shapes with the watermelon and I talk about the shapes in Mandarin. It takes about five minutes and mm -hmm. then she eats the watermelon. Oh, the video is on nice. my website. Uh, but it's just part of her snack time and she learns through that. Right. Well, thank you very much for, having, uh, for joining us. And... Um, well, we we'll hope to see you on Parent Town soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.